It's MasterChef. I really do want MasterChef to change my life. Two expert judges to test them at the highest level. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. The idea of winning a course is appealing. I'm very competitive. This is one tough competition. I can see John saying, Susie, you're master chef. For whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six contestants all want to become the next star restaurant chef, but only one will get through to the quarter final. They face three tough tests. They have to invent a dish from scratch. Are we not maybe seven ingredients too many? They have to survive the pressure of a professional kitchen. You've got to answer me, OK? And they have to impress the judges with their own recipes. Absolutely right on the money. Bullseye. All in just two days. At the end of this, three of you will be going home. Let's cook. It's the quick elimination test. Deciding which three stay are judges John Tarode, top chef and restaurateur. Six people out there who want to live their dream. Can they really cook? We're about to find out. And food writer and ingredients expert, Greg Wallace. If you're going to do well in this competition, you have to shine right from the very start. The contestants have 40 minutes to invent a dish from any of today's ingredients, including mixed berries, chicken, Pasta, smoked salmon, courgettes, puff pastry, cream cheese, red peppers, and horseradish cream. Mum of two, Holly, is confident she has the skill to win over the judges. I have such a good knowledge of food, I feel that I'm going to know what John and Greg are going to enjoy and want to eat. Holly, what are you going to cook for us? It's just pasta with courgette and smoked salmon. And will that show us a lot of cookery skill? I hope so. What will it show us? That I can cook pasta, not overcook it, that I can um, make, like, a cream sauce. Do MasterChef winners make bowls of pasta? There's nothing wrong with pasta. Jonathan, it's been a very long time since I've seen somebody run around as fast as you are in the kitchen. Yeah, I'm very energetic. That's uh, my style, I'm afraid. Adrenaline junkie Jonathan believes his energetic approach will make him the best cook. What I love about cooking is the same I love about sport, the immense pressure and the buzz out of, out of both of them. What sort of cook are you right now? I'm developing. I'm obviously only 22, but I'm, I'm on the road. Do you think you've got what it takes to be MasterChef? Yeah, I think I do. Hotel manager Paul likes experimenting with flavours. Paul, you've got some interesting sort of combinations going on here. It seems like there's lots of things that maybe don't necessarily go together. Are you hedging your bets here? No, I'm pretty convinced that they'll go together by the time I'm finished. I think the best way to describe my cooking style would be it's a bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. Software manager Susie is at a turning point in her life. I guess you'd call it a bit of a midlife crisis. I've realised that I'm working in an office and I could be doing so much better, doing something that I really enjoy and that I've got passion for. Susie, you actually look happy. I am, Greg. I, I love being in the kitchen. Never happier. So what are you going to do which is going to wow us, Susie? A uh, summer fruit tart with honey cream. Nice thing to eat, but is it showing you as a champion? It's showing me as someone who can take a lot of very different ingredients and come up with something that tastes really good. See, it's nice to have somebody with confidence going here and say, I'm a great cook. You have only five minutes left! 18-year-old Emily is confident her age won't hold her back in the competition. I'm fresh and I'm enthusiastic and hopefully I'll be able to bring a bit more excitement to cookery. Emily, in your 18 years, have you built up enough food knowledge? Oh, definitely. 
How? Well, I have always been like reading cookbooks and stuff, and I always love to try them out. Does your mum know you're here? She does, and she's very proud. IT officer Chris wants his cooking skills to give him a new start in life. When I was 18, I wanted to be a chef, got talked out of it. I've always been interested in, in cooking, and the time's right, so why not? Chris, yes. you have been stirring that same pot since you got in here? I have. I'm guessing it's a pasta sauce, is it? It's a horseradish cream sauce. Oh, horseradish. Mm. Are you good enough? I know I am. Ooh. Get it on those plates. You have a minute left. Time's up. That's it. Finished. Hotel manager Paul is taking a chance with some unusual flavour combinations. Parmesan stuffed smoked salmon, soy and garlic mash and roasted vegetables. So we've got smoked salmon, parmesan cheese, pecan nuts and chives, soy sauce, potatoes, garlic. Are we not maybe seven ingredients too many? I think there's a few more in there as well. Is there? I don't know what to say really. The flavour is the smoked salmon, which has become salty and smoky. And because of the way you've cooked it, it's become like bacon. I think you're trying a little bit too hard. It's, it's a bit messy. I'm not sure it needs every single ingredient you've stuck in there, but that's actually not bad to eat. IT officer Chris has made tagliatelle with horseradish sauce and smoked salmon, but will his effort pay off? It needs more seasoning. You spent so much time in that sauce, Chris. There was a reason for it, and that was your star. But then it's got to deliver, doesn't it? I don't know if it has delivered. There's not a huge amount of flavour, but your combination's right. Passionate cook Susie has made a honey cream and berry tart. It's a very tasty tart. But actually, you've got to start to think, right, can I make a praline or something like that that goes on the side which stands me out as an individual? Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Creamy honey centre. Yeah. I reckon you cook. Adrenaline junkie Jonathan has made pasta with a vegetable, chicken and tomato sauce and garlic bread. The idea of a bowl of pasta has to be a bowl of pasta. What we have got is we've got a plate with three things. It's all tomato sauce, all about the tomato sauce. The chicken gets sort of lost in it. We haven't got the pasta well. I like your tomato sauce and I like the delicate way you cook the vegetables. That means you probably do cook a bit, but there are big mistakes on that. Mum of two, Holly, is confident her tagliatelle with smoked salmon courgettes and dill in a cream sauce will impress. Really delicious flavours. The pasta isn't cooked enough. Yeah. There's not enough sauce. Sure. Now, we can argue about the cooking of pasta until we're blue in the face. Yeah. I would say I'd want it a bit softer than that. Right. 18-year-old Emily wants to prove she has skill, but will her cheesecake pecan crumble and fruit compote show it? The berries are lovely because they have their own natural sweetness, their own sugar. Lots more topping, less of the cream cheese. You got yourself a star. Yeah. It's creamy. It's rich. It would have been a perfect cheesecake, but I only get a little bit of crunch. Greg and I are going to sit down, we're going to have a conversation. Off you go. We have some talent in this room, John. But I'm very, very concerned about Jonathan. The pasta wasn't cooked. The ratatouille had cheese over it. He still looks like he's cooking in university digs to me. I know I have made some big mistakes, but hopefully they can see some potential in me as a cook. Jonathan just does not cook enough. Jonathan's out. I want to put Susie through. I think there is a great cook lurking behind those glasses. 
and I think she got hold of her nerve and got herself through today competently. A positive thing is the fact that Greg said it was gorgeous. That was just... just really made me smile. We're putting Susie through. And I think we should put Emily through. She will have the sprightly attitude to go far if she has the repertoire or if she has natural ability. And we may have an absolute starlet there. I agree. Can we talk about Chris? He concentrated on one part of his dish, that was that sauce. 40 minutes to make a bowl of some sauce. It should have been beautiful. It should have been velvety, full of flavour. He mustn't have tasted it. It's just, it's not exciting. I thought it was perfect, but that's my opinion. Well, let's knock Chris out. We've got Susie and Emily in. Jonathan and Chris out. Yes. That leaves a decision between Paul and Holly. And Paul did achieve something quite extraordinary today. How he achieved it, I'm really, really unsure. We had brown grey mash, which had soy sauce in it. We had salmon with pecan nuts. He was actually fortunate that it didn't taste revolting. I don't, I don't care how the guy, really, how the guy got to where he is. It tasted good. Holly's uh, bowl of pasta wasn't great. But it wasn't just, I'm going to make a sauce and drop it with my pasta. I'm actually going to make a dish from my pasta. OK, here's the conundrum. Is what Paul did today more accomplished than what Holly achieved today? We have made our decision. Susie. You're cooking with us tomorrow, Susie. Well done. Thank you. Jonathan. And Chris. You are leaving us, gentlemen. Sorry. Thank you. Emily. You're staying with us, Emily. <laughs> Oof. Paul or Holly? Holly. You are staying, Holly. I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> ecstatic. Can't believe it. I can't quite believe I'm shaking still. I really feel that this is it now, that tomorrow is my opportunity to really show them what I can do, because I certainly didn't do that today. For the moment, they can relax, but tomorrow the pressure is on as they face two more daunting tests. <laughs> it's early morning on day two, and the contestants arrive at Le Pont de la Tour an upmarket London restaurant well known for its modern French menu. Head chef James Walker is expecting the contestants to work at a professional level. We've got about 150 people booked for lunch today and I won't accept anything below our standards here. So lots to do if you want to follow me. Samaj, so one skate. Yes, chef. Passionate cook Susie is in charge of the skate with black rice and sauce vierge. Keen to avoid mistakes, Susie takes extra care with her delicate fish dish. I do know what I'm doing. The skate needs to just sort of start to not quite fall apart, but the leaves of it needs to just sort of separate out. OK, so much. Two skate, two duck. It pays off, and she makes a good start. Two skate, chef. Yeah, very, very welcome. Perfect. Thank you. One duck, one beef, one lamb. Yes, chef. Yeah. Family cook Holly is looking after the duck with foie gras and peaches. One duck in four minutes. But she's soon phased by the speed required for service. Okay, let's have those two ducks. Come on. A bit too much sauce. You just need to put a little bit of sauce around the outside. We played them. Okay, so much. Two melon, one ballantine, three sea bass. The baby of the bunch, Emily, is cooking sea bass with pea puree and spring vegetables. Emily, yep, you've yep. got to answer me. Okay? Sorry. But she makes a poor first impression by failing to concentrate. It's all messy here. Emily, Emily, watch me, watch me. When you put everything on the plate, yep. try not to make a mess. Yep. Okay, two duck coming. Two duck coming. Yes, sir. Holly is still struggling, and her presentation is suffering. That plate's a mess. Look, you see all that's dried and everything? Let's replate it. Right now, quickly. 
Her table is waiting for their order. OK, let's have the duck. Come on, let's go. But back in the kitchen, disaster strikes. Holly has burnt an expensive piece of foie gras. It cooks very, very quickly and the oven's really, really hot. You forget how hot the oven is. She's rushing and it's getting a bit sloppy. Two skates so much. Yes, chef. And Holly is not the only one having a hard time. OK, this one... It's fell apart. Yeah, yeah. falling apart, so that's, that's not good enough. OK. OK. Boot both, both again. Yep. Yeah. That's going that way, that's going that way. Yeah. OK. I kind of tried to line it up, yeah. but I didn't quite work it right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's a bit upsetting, actually, because I messed one up. One more sea bass, one fish and chips. Yes, sir. But across the kitchen, fast learner Emily is now focused and producing perfectly presented plates of food. Yeah, yeah, that's that's perfect, yeah. Very well done. Yeah, she's, she's got it now. Service piece, 35, 3, 5. Yeah, I got off to a bit of a shaky start, but I think I picked it up quite fast and it's been brilliant, so I really enjoyed it. <laughs> With service over, John and Greg get the lowdown from head chef James. A lovely setting for our three contestants. Was it chaos in there? I wouldn't say it was chaotic. It had its moments. So tell me about Emily. She started off struggling a little bit with the presentation. It's almost like she took a few steps back, got herself together, and then she did grasp it. Tell us about Susie. The first few plates looked very nice. It was cooked perfectly. Then sort of halfway through service, the fish was pointing in different directions. One of them was overcooked, so she went from good to bad rather than from bad to good. How did Holly cope? She was taking it incredibly seriously, but rushing, maybe feeling the pressure, putting too much sauce on the plate, burning a piece of foie gras. Holly, um, I would say, continued to be quite um, timid. Radio, million dollar question, James. Who would you employ and why? I think I would employ um, Emily. She showed me a lot of progression through the day. She didn't start off the best, but she shone in the end. Now they're straight back to Master Chef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Yesterday, Susie's dessert got her through, but she faltered during service. She now needs to prove she's good enough to become a pro. Mum of two, Holly's confidence was shattered when she only just scraped through and then struggled in the restaurant. Can she turn things around and push herself into the quarterfinals? At just 18, Emily impressed with her cheesecake and how well she learnt under pressure. Will she make it three in a row and go on to become a winner? You now have the opportunity to really, really impress us. Good luck. Do it. They have just one hour to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Only one will win a place in the quarter-final. Susie's hoping to turn her life around and prove she has the skill to win. Susie? What are you, you going to do? A pan-fried sea bass with a sauce vierge, butter biscuits with strawberries and vanilla cream, and a black pepper caramel. Interesting. You're pushing the boat out a little bit more. The idea of the black pepper caramel, tell me about it. It was laying in bed last night when I was thinking, what can I do to, to lift it above? And I thought black pepper and strawberries goes really well. So this bit's on the fly. <laughs> yeah, you know the danger of experimentation, don't you? I do, I do. Susie, go through lots and lots of processes. You know, really keen to show us how clever a cook she is. It's about flavour, Susie. Can you pack it full of flavour? Emily's pushing the boat out with some experimental dishes she's invented herself. Emily, what are they? They're roses, and I'm going to um, crystallise them with some desiccated coconut for my pudding. Very good. Very interesting indeed. What are our two courses? Our two courses are seared scallops with watercress gnocchi. And then for pudding, we've got a rhubarb soup with coconut creme chibouse and crystallised rose petals. Now, look, this isn't anything you'd get out of a recipe book. Yep. Where on earth is this coming from? I suppose. <laughs> are you trying to shock us a little bit, Emily? Not shock. I just want to do something a bit different and show you that I can do it, I suppose. 
They are interesting dishes. Is she going to be able to get it right? A rhubarb soup with the crystallized rose petals. This is, it's not just food, this is art. I'm very, very excited. I'm also part petrified. <laughs> Only 10 minutes left. After two difficult rounds, Holly is hoping to showcase her skills and knowledge with a classic menu. You've got a lot to prove today, haven't you, Holly? I certainly have. And what are you going to cook for us? Fresh asparagus with a poached egg with a sorrel hollandaise sauce. And for Maine, sea bass with puy lentils and salsa verde. Do you have that little something? that will make you a MasterChef finalist. I feel like I've got a really good knowledge already. I could turn this into a profession, which, you know, I, I hope what I will do. Holly, being very, very classical, I think that's very, very brave, but they have to be absolutely perfect. You've only got one minute left. That is it. Finished. Can Susie prove she has what it takes with her sea bass couscous and sauce vierge, followed by strawberries and vanilla cream, butter biscuits and black pepper caramel? That couscous should have a little bit more sauce vierge so that you can actually make your couscous a little bit wetter. The fish is cooked beautifully, it's soft. The sauce is citrusy and sweet. I think there's some work to be done on the couscous, but I think your flavourings are, are good. The fish is moist, packed full of flavour, very well cooked. It does lose its way a little in the middle with the couscous. Bring in the pudding. The flavours and textures are lovely. You pick up the deep the caramel, you go into buttery biscuit and cream. You put a lot of work into your food, you're obviously a cook. A bit of pepper in there, a bit of spice which is quite nice. Lovely cream, really well cooked biscuits. It all works very, very well together. The youngest contestant, Emily, wants to wow with two unique dishes. Scallops with watercress gnocchi, followed by a rhubarb soup with coconut creme shabus and crystallized rose petals. I don't have a criticism. Really? <laughs> I think it's hot. You're 18 years old, you're cooking like that. Incredible. Everything's cooked very, very well. I, I can't criticise it, but it, I, don't, I don't love it like my good friend beside me. <laughs> Let's move on. Soft coconut shabus, delicious. Flavour of the rhubarb, delicious. And then it just goes a little bit sweet from that rose water. It is almost absolutely there. Um, delightful blend. I don't know what's making you. <laughs> Has Holly regained her confidence with her classic fresh asparagus, poached egg and sorrel hollandaise, followed by sea bass, puy lentils and salsa verde. How's our poached egg? It's just cooked, I've got to say. I like the idea of the sorrel with it because the flavour comes through. I feel like that hollandaise could actually be a bit more punchy. Sure. But not bad. The texture of the sticky yolk and the sticky hollandaise is great, but there's not enough lemon bite through the sorrel to lift it. Beautiful, beautiful, soft fish, really well cooked. It's very, very well done indeed. Thank you very much. Beautifully soft, powerfully flavoured fish. Absolutely right on the money. Bullseye. Thank you very much. We're going to have a chat about you. Off you go. Today, I think that's going to be very difficult because we have got three cooks who are very, very good indeed. We look at Susie's food. A little tiny piece of sea bass, beautifully cooked, lovely flavour on the side of it. No massive, massive mistake. 
Her dessert, I found it tasty. It's going to be really tight. I think I've been a bit unlucky to be up against two such good other cooks. The fish with the couscous was a nice dish, but she isn't packing the flavour of Holly and she's not bringing the style of Emily. I think, I'm afraid, it leaves Susie waving goodbye from the back of the bus, I'm sorry to say. Holly, just about scraped through yesterday. Didn't have a brilliant kitchen round today. Wow, her food, John. Her food. There are no surprises going on in there, but that is proper grub. Saleable food is what Holly did today. I think that, that fish looked like it came out of a restaurant kitchen. It really did. Perfectly cooked piece of bass, fantastic lentils, not water all over the place, really delicious salsa verde. We say to people, give us classic recipes, full of flavour, learn how to do that properly. Well, that's what Holly is doing. My confidence has come back and I really feel that I could win this and that would just be amazing. We go across to Emily's bench and we taste the first dish, the main course. I am very rarely moved to the stage where I say I have no comment. I thought it just danced around my mouth like magic. And that dessert, the cookery accomplishment that goes with doing something like that, out of the brain of an 18-year-old, is, I think, something quite extraordinary. I'm shaking, because I think she's awesome. I do, I think she's awesome. It's well known that genius is very close to madness, and I think her food is bordering on madness at times. I always had this sort of niggling doubt in the back of my head, I'm only 18, there's no way I'm going to be able to perform at a level that's the same as people who've been cooking for ages. The risk is such an extraordinary one. 18 years old, does she have a repertoire? Will she be good enough to go up against the other people who are quarter-finalists? Because Holly will give them a run for their money. OK, Holly or Emily? This is a tough competition, and we only can take one of you with us. Our quarter-finalist is... Emily. Congratulations. Oh, my God! Oh, no way! Congratulations. Oh, my God! I can't believe it! Well done. I'll always do something to do with food. That's definitely my future. But that's not going to stop just because of this, no way. It's been a fantastic two days, and I'm just really disappointed that I didn't do enough. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, I'm absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> I think my mum would probably be incredibly proud of me. Yeah, I got Oh my god! Emily will be back for the quarter-final, where she'll face three other exceptional cooks.